Once, twice, three times a lady. And then there's Kelly. <laughs> Hi, everyone. Where do you see a lady? Hello, everyone. Welcome to the newest episode of Kaiji Okami's channel. I'm Karlika Kane, the only nice and sane one in this group. That's just what a crazy person would say. <laughs> then we have you. Silver Quill, who drives her nuts. And then we have you. Who are you? Ow. I barely my even chest. tapped you. Oh, my chest! Oh, this is just like at the Alamo where they say... <laughs> Every time you talk or text, someone shoots him. <laughs> I am the Kaiji no Kami. Who is the worst? With the actor? over dramaticness. Because we are talking about something good this time. Common Rider Revice. <coughs> vice, 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 vice. Your vice is showing. Grand Theft Auto. Revice City. He's yours now. Please take it. I don't want. I don't want. This is wow. This sounds like a bad uh, divorce. I have Go everything. away. Go away. All right. So I'll take this leg. <laughs> this half of the leg. Oh my. <laughs> so yes, we're talking about episodes seventeen and eighteen. Seventeen's title is called Deepening Betrayal. The true value of buddies. Friendship. Is Eat. magic. That's right. Demons are magic. <laughs> my little demon, my little demon. Who will you devour today? My inner demon. <laughs> my inner demon, my inner demon. <coughs> so the episode... They continue, so right after where we left off last time with the dead man's base being destroyed, we get introduced to a new... The, the director of uh, Phoenix, who is totally not going to turn out no, to be an no, evil villain. No, 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 We have to start with something else. So episode 16 ends with Sakura going downstairs into the creepy family's house. Going to a basement that has a long staircase. And a light coming out. And yes. a green light. Green light at the end and of the And then what does she well, do? The she gets genre savvy. And it's like, oh, hell no. I, I mean, not since uh, the, the 2016 Ghostbusters movie <coughs> with that room full of creepy puppet or mannequins have I seen such genre savvy as to say, oh, hell no. I'm going the other way. You all can deal with that. And then she's like, nope, 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 nope. There you go. Make a new gif on that. Nope, 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 nope. So, so we're, we're left tantalized and curious about this blank family. <laughs> Why do they have nothing? Okay, one of my co-workers is a professed minimalist. Like, he is such a minimalist. Like Ryan? No, no, even worse. So he has two children. Did he make sure they were small children? <laughs> Let me finish! Yeah. Let me finish! Let me finish! So, his wife's not a minimalist. His children, obviously, are not minimalist. And his mentality is so frustrated. So he will check if a child, if one of his kids have not played with the toy in a while, he will start packing the toys away. Oh, dude, no. He doesn't understand collector value. And I made that comment. <laughs> but no, the reason why I mention this is because I'm, I think of this house now. Whenever I hear my coworker, I'm like, is this what a minimalist is? Because if this is what it is, I'm a little afraid. I have stuff. And I have stuff packed in stuff, packed in stuff. But then again, you have more stuff than we do. Oh, yeah. Check out the size of my stuff. <laughs> Are you broken? Anyway, as I was trying to say, because that was after we met totally not evil director. I dude, don't care. That was the most important part of the episode to me. got... Her disappointment was tangible. I mean, I think the, the apartment actually canted over from the deepness of her disappointment. So I want to know them. See, this is why I'm not genre savvy. 
I would be going down those stairs, probably getting murdered by an axe murderer, but I want to know! Alright, but back to, to the beginning of the episode. Oh. Yes, so we've got director dude who's got the the gloves, the to I'm totally not a villain black gloves I would love to have. Well, that, now, I don't know if he's going to be a villain. He's a villain. He doesn't quite have the hair for it. No, he's totally a villain. He's got the I'm totally not a villain he's black gloves. He's got the gloves, but you know what? He's as eccentric as K Ikari. Mm -mm. I think he might you be... You mean George? George Ikari, Kari Chan. Kari Chan. He might be George's father. Mm -hmm. No, they don't have the same names. That doesn't mean uh, anything. Have you never heard the phrase bastard? I'm Honey! We've been together for over 20 this is years. Japan. We do not have the same last name. Well, I hope we don't. We're married! So? Oh, you're so modern. I love you. So, wow. <laughs> that turns strangely wholesome. <laughs> All right, so yes, then the sister is there. We cut to her. She is thinking about what happened when she went, nope, I'm not being part of a horror movie. Bye. Leaves, and this guy comes up like, is this the Phoenix, uh... Consultation <clears throat> Center. Which, it probably is at this point. <laughs> With the biggest busybody in Japan? And apparently, uh, Mr... What, what's his name? Bosan? No. The guy... Busan. Oh, Busan. Who... Boo. Who apparently can Boo. investigate anyone and find out their history in short order. We don't know what he does as a day job, but holy crud. But apparently... He can ingratiate himself in everybody's lives. And they don't know him. I know. Because apparently dad is out sick right now. Dad is out because he doesn't have a heart. Literally. <laughs> I wasn't going mm. that far yet. I was like, dad's out sick at yeah, the hospital. That's like saying he went out for some smokes. He'll be back <laughs> eventually. I wished my dad did that when I was a kid. Just go for some Fucking Okay, that's dark. I'm gonna move on. And the wholesomeness <laughs> is done. Well, it no. lasted a record time for this. Your household. dad did better. He didn't even let you meet him. No, I met the second one. This is getting uniquely personal. Mom, I love you. Please don't. Sorry. Please stop this video now. You're like, why couldn't you? <laughs> You're the one person in the world that deserved to go out for some cigarettes and never come back. Why did you keep coming back? Sorry, Corellica's mom. Maybe because he made me go buy his cigarettes. Oh my god, that's even worse. <laughs> anyway, so... This Do you guy, need to take a minute? I so mean... this guy turns out to be former <laughs> classmates with Ote <coughs> not Oteca, Julio. Julio. Reveals Julio. his whole life story that Julio became a... Dead man over a Yugi, not Yu-Gi-Oh card. Totally, okay, totally no. Not Yu -Gi -Oh. Actually, this is a good example of mental health. I know. I'm just okay. Trying fine. to say so, it was because there, he told no mental health because he totally kaibud his Yu-Gi-Oh card. So we find out that Julio's real name is Tamaki Go. Yes. And his friend from high school. Makes me wonder how old they are because they still look super flippin' young. Um, but they look 19. But they're trying. They're not trying to pass themselves off as high schoolers. No, but for um, Julio now, Tamaki, yeah. he basically he was a think of Ami from Sailor Moon. I think that's kind of a simplistic representation. I really introvert shut in. Huh? I would rather not, just because that Sailor Moon cartoon's got the boom and it makes me think the wrong things. Oh my god. Mm -hmm. Bare Naked Lady song, just move on. Anyways, um, so introverted, shut in, very shy, and it appears that he's bullied a lot by fellow classmates because he just doesn't get comfortable and... I actually think, once again, they handled it right mm -hmm. because they didn't make it seem like a joke, like what they did with, um, the world. The world? Oh, where he had those bouts of and, depression. And his, while it's depressing, the logical thing when you feel betrayed, I think anyone, but especially 
for someone who probably has extreme social anxiety is to try to find a way to master it. There's a lot of psychological talk that when you experience betrayal, you never really get over it until you learn to adapt your behavior to avoid repetition. Which is what he does here, in but, a way. But his he overcompensates by not trusting anybody now. Or going to... The, lashing on to the first person who showed him kindness. Exactly. Which was Arugula. <clears throat> Artichoke? Hello. Apricot. Mm. Christina? Alabasta? Mm. We're Alli not going to go with the logical name, Christina. Alligator? Uh, Arbor? Day? <laughs> In the meantime, while they're debating behind me. Artichoke. <laughs> anchovy. So Lady then... Anchovy. That's her name. It, Lady Anchovy. <laughs> all hail Lady Anchovy, the saltiest of all common writer <laughs> enemies. <laughs> I love it. I love it. Oh, don't be a salty bitch. She is. But... but uh, so... Okay, go ahead, fine. No, go on. No, I was just going to say, it was actually kind of fascinating to see this backstory <clears throat> because these two episodes, I really feel, are Julio episodes. Mm -hmm. And something in... This is something that we really haven't gotten in a long time for any tokusatsu is when we're actually getting like hella level development Deve for a villain sympathetic development yes a sympathetic it, development that works mm. and i'm like holy hell we're having not, <clears throat> not one but two episodes to develop a villain give them a backstory make you actually feel so much pain for him and wish him the best. You don't wish him to become a hero. Like, you're not expecting a redemption. But at the same time, you're like... Even the score. <laughs> okay, so he has done more development in those two episodes than Stacy and Zenkaiser has done in 43 episodes. Well, I just... I was like impassioned. Like at first I thought he was like a joke character because Aguilera, Anchovy, Sama, Anchovy -sama. slapped him straight in the face for staying smile, but now we have an answer to that and I'm like, you bitch! Although at the same time, I literally, I did ask a lot, how many times am I going to have to hear that word today? Oh my yes, God. Yes. The more I hear smile, the more I become a frowny face. Mm. <laughs> But overall, this particular episode does have a subplot mm. of new toy. Revy. New and toy, who dat? Who dat? Who dat? Who dat? Practicing to be able to use the newest upgrade form that will probably be replaced in about five or six episodes. It's called Volcano. But it is one of my favorite common writer tropes. The new power that is so dangerous to the user. For now. For now. Well, I mean, I'm thinking of the hazard trigger from Build, which never stopped being a danger. He had no. to engineer his way around it. Well, yeah, I like when there's consequences to search and upgrade forms. The consequences? Good Lord, get some marshmallows, son. You're going to have one hell of a cookout. Uh, well, and I love, I do love the fact... He hot. Feeling hot. I don't know. It's kind of cool for Vice. But, so we have... I'm ignoring you because you're so, dad jokes. But, but as I was going to say, but I liked how uh, George pretty much tells them you have to work in sync with these powers because one is fire, one is ice. They have to keep each other in check. Or you'll burn in the fires of hell. He is dramatic. <laughs> Almost as dramatic as Vice when he gets his tail frozen off. Oh, what's happening? What's happening? Look at that. Oh my God. Oh, it's back. <laughs> <laughs> okay, that actually. That entire skit reminded me of something that you would do in one of your videos. It's true. It's true. You just had like, because I could see you being that dramatic. Yeah, what I have my head? I have a, a little image of the top half of my head blown off. Oh my god! Oh my god! And oh my I'm god, still oh my talking. Oh my god! Oh my god! Oh my god! Oh shows god. A, I, you don't need a brain to keep talking. Oh wait! I'm animated. This doesn't hurt. Cartoon logic. Here, let me just get a pen and pencil. But as Julio Tamaki 
becomes more sympathetic and uh, developed. Uh, the other guy. Old Tekka. Old Tekka. Oh my He God. becomes far more of a bastard. And he is badass. Badass is going to be shifting scales in the second episode. But we also have a third plot point in this episode. The cultists? Well, oh my god. We have like ten yeah, plot points in this episode. Remember, but oh. the third plot point I was focusing on was actually for um, demons. As his prophet. Because his he, um, which we find out more in the second episode for that too... But since his um, henshin is not functioning as it should, you actually see the sparks coming off of it. Which is a problem for a lot of guys. They, the cultists and everybody directly attack him as the weak link. And you wonder how this is going to play out. Because... Oh, Julio's going to totally become demons. Uh, well, I'm not going there yet. I'm talking about... The actual demons right now. I know, but I'm saying Julio's going to become demons. But anyways, that was an interesting plot point for them to really jump in on that weakness because now I want to see how it plays out. But yeah, we had uh, where Olteca is going around telling all the cultists, okay, you can come. I mean, it's we're going to start attacking again, so come back to us. And the way he greets everyone with this emotional, oh, did you enjoy being out in the world again? And this elderly lady is like, no, it's, it's still cruel and trods on the weak. And he's like, oh, I understand. I'm here for you. This is genuine cult recruitment. Oh, it is. It's actually kind of fascinating <clears throat> because this is a kid's show. I know we're adults. And I know the show is kind of teetering on that kids and adult audience, but technically, it is no. technically supposed to be okay. for kids. But the fact that this cult is, that's a dark, dark mm -hmm. place. Because think of like the two big cults that happened in the US. Well, the Gate. one out in Texas. Heaven's Gate. Heaven's Gate, yes. That. T like dozens of people died. Were they the ones that all killed themselves at the same time? Mm -hmm. As the as a comet was passing over. Yeah. It and the owner even admitted were the cult of cults. Um. But. Um, <clears throat> but no, know, it's just so dark. But no, and then yeah, when we have Oteca use the vice stamp on the la or uh, or the, on the lady who willingly does it, and after the which is cool design for that monster, and then after. Revy and Vice destroy it. They're like, well, why didn't she come back? Because that's not how it works. That monster, when they use that stamp, the monster eats them to be born. And it's it's tragic because I've never been a part of a cult. I know people make comments about religious religion being a cult, essentially, but. Seeing the mindset, and I've seen people who are a part of crazy ass shit, and it's Manchupo. Uh, we're not going with Yakuza logic. But any feedback from you? Well, that the transformation is so creepy because they focus on the face of this as it's petrified in the shell. Now, as a Halo fan, I think of the flood. There is a scene where. Uh, a captain who's like a close comrade has been absorbed and it's his face in this large organic um, growth screaming oh wow that, but he, he's gone there's no human left in it mm -hmm. so seeing the death basically you're seeing the death of humanity as this new creature and the fact that it it emerged with this deep masculine voice from this elderly woman it really highlights the fact that he's no, he's not part of her. She was just a means to its creation and consumption. So yeah, it was very dramatic and more than a little unnerving. And yes, it is a cool design. Remind me to come back to that in the in the next episode. Just part. Yeah. So basically, then uh, the episode just ends with 
them find it out, and then uh, Ravi goes running after. Well, no, it. They find it, how it ends. I think is what's the most tragic, because for Iki, he just unwittingly killed someone. Well, but he didn't kill her because she was already dead, but his whole goal <laughs> was to save a life. He doesn't want to kill anyone. He wants to save everyone. I was wondering, where did I go wrong? I lost a friend somewhere along in the bitterness, and I could have stayed up with you all night had I known how to save a life. It's a very emotional song. Why are you giggling? Because I know the song you're talking about. Why are, you, why are you giggling? He doesn't know. Oh, wait, I can play it on my phone and get this demonetized. Let's Hang on. Let's not. Let's Aww. not. But I think for me, <clears throat> Icky, or Icky, he goes so crazy, he breaks rank of this new Vice stamp, goes to attack Olteca because he feels like he's powerful. And even Vice is like, where are you going? He goes to attack him and Oteka, before he even transforms to defend himself, Iki is just burst literally. Well, that's speaking of the next episode. No. Yeah. It ends this episode. No, it ended with him running. Charging, yeah. Oh, okay, yeah, sorry. Because then the next episode comes in with just a little recap and the show then yes. kicks off with him running and bursts into flames. And he has third degree burns. And how he dehensions and you see his <clears throat> eyes like literally dead, that's also another sign of incredible acting to take all emotion out of your eyes. Because no matter for anyone... The eyes literally are the windows to the soul. Well, that's not true. I can take all the emotion out of my eyes. Look. You know what I mean! Leaving your eyes open! And take all the emotion out of your eyes as they're open. <laughs> wow! I got him to do like a French face palm. I know! French face palm? Well, I sound like just the pinky. You're like, oh, uh, uh, I'm, I'm so distraught. Mon ami. But, but sacra bla. Now, I would sacra argue that bleu. that device actually broke ranks first as he turns his back. And he would say, hey, did you see how cool we were? Did you see how what, what we did? So, now, yeah. I'm, we... I'm a little surprised that Vice did not complain. Hey, wait, I get the hand-me-down form? There is that. So then we have... So Iki's now in the hospital, um, and Julio ends up showing up at Sakura school, wanting, or not Sakura school. He shows up at the hospital, right? Not wanting to fight. Not wanting to fight. Wanted to bargain that if he dies in battle against Olteca, he wants her to take care of Aguilera, and then, but she makes that you have to go see your friend. And he's like, and his friend's like, oh, I'm so sorry, blah, 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 blah. And then you find out it wasn't the friend that betrayed. It was actually... Well, it was dual betrayed. Ta well, because Tamaki, as he's leaving, because Tamaki was moving out of town probably due to family things or anything like that. And as he drives past, <clears throat> he sees his friend. The reason his friend didn't come to see him off is because he was getting the, kick, the shit kicked out of him. By the same bullies. Yeah, who threatened him to make him do that betrayal. So these folks are working the mental and physical. So they probably grew up to be psychopaths or CEOs. Exactly. And hopefully that someday a teacher will go will come and kill them all. Whoa. whoa. Wow. And but, we're dark again. But it's from lost judgment. But, oh, that makes it okay. <laughs> Judgment. Having <laughs> talking about a teacher killing their students is perfectly fine. No, it's as long as it comes from the whole, lost judgment. The whole plot is a bull is bullies are being murdered for being bullies, and they and I totally agree with that with everything on that aspect. Okay. Uh, we would we at uh, Creativity by Design would like to say we do not endorse murder in any shape or form, and there are other alternatives to curbing uh, bullying and violence in schools than rampant murder. Please do not take anything Kaiju no Kami says as anything factual, including his review. <laughs> Thank you. 
I'm the son of a lawyer. Can you tell? <laughs> I know. I was so, like, damn. But yeah, so but we've got... We, so we, No, we, no, he we, wasn't we, done. We, we, Kaiju Nakami is also forgotten to talk about Sakura, which seems like a very blatant oversight. Fuck you, Kaiju Nakami. <laughs> so then we have Julio there <laughs> with his friend. He, go he goes to tell Julio, or he goes to tell his friend about what really happened. He looks up and Oteka is... <laughs> wait, no, no, wait, 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 We have so much more to talk about. We're jumping in. You have completely Mario jumped Sakura. Yes! So what? Because I'm she... talking about the good no, part. No, no. No, 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 I want to talk about the good part too, but this is, before this, okay. it's kind of important. Sakura is making big promises upon which she can't deliver. Because, well, and this started in the prior episode when Yosuke, that is the friend, he asks Sakura to save Tamaki. Yes. And, ev and even Daiji is like, you can't promise that. We can't promise that. That's beyond our control. And so you see her trying, especially because when, they, when they're in the hospital looking over um, Iki, you can see the guilt palpable on her face because she feels as she's the one who encouraged and almost forced the hand of her brother to take that next step to try to save everybody because she's making a promise to somebody else that will save him. But it goes even further back than that. Mm -hmm. Recall the, they even had a quick flashback, uh, Japan's biggest egotist, the CEO yes. was trying to mess with Iki's head, saying, no, you can't save everyone. And Iki was saying, look, if I have to kill someone, I'll bear that burden, not my, not my, my younger, siblings so here he is trying to live up to that pledge and carry that burden that's why he gets up and tries again with the very awesome scene of vice being his conscience once again well and i actually so i well the other thing i want to mention here it's after the scene that i've been talking okay about. okay well let me finish this one thing that actually still happens before Yes. And that's actually George. Okay. When he when he is in the um the room and he actually apologizes to Iki for the fact that he got hurt. Like he bears the weight of that responsibility because he created this device and even though it was Iki's ego making him think that he had it, mm -hmm. it still was the fault in his mind for George that he created it. He takes on that responsibility of everything that happened. And I actually thought that was a great character moment for him because we've always seen him egotistical as hell, like very laissez-faire about whatever he does. And for him to say, this is on me. Very rare. It's very rare. And I thought it was a great way of saying that all of these characters are so much more than two-dimensional. Mm -hmm. Now we can get to the cool part. Yes, now you can Okay, <laughs> so back to Julio. About to tell his friend the truth of what happened. Looks up and there you are. There his friend is being held by El Teca, who's like, nah, bitch. I'm taking this guy. That, okay, when you see the Gifu Vi stamp in his hand, we done it. I was so heartbroken. Like I actually wanted to yell at the screen, like, no, no, don't do it. Don't say smile again. No, I wasn't thinking about that. I was. I, I just. I was like, knowing because of the previous episode, the woman when she did get hit is essentially gone you're like oh my god but then so he hits him with it and you just have this dramatic scene of him slowly disintegrating and being frozen to for the creature to break out and he does say smile now okay 
we watched these episodes the same day as we watched the end of Ultraman Trigger. So I have heard Smile, I would say, at least 17 times today. Likely much more. Yes. But that's like the mere minimum. That one smile he gave had more drama than the entire of Trigger. Oh, my God. That one word held more meaning in this setting than it ever did in... Trigger's entirety. I held my ba myself back from crying because when he's disintegrating and he says Tamaki, smile, and I'm like, oh my god! But no! then, so who, then we have Oteka turns around, we see the monster run towards Julio, and then next thing you know, Oteka's walking, and you see the monster just fly into the building past Oteka. He's like, wait, what? And we all were like, that was the coolest fucking scene ever! Yeah, that was the that was the highlight. And at first, when, when the monster first appears, like, oh, they're are they gonna reuse the the costume for all the monsters like this? Whoops, guess <laughs> I guess it was a budgeting thing. <laughs> Woo! But but we didn't see him dot be destroyed yet, so there's still a possibility. Oh, I'm pretty sure hey, that monster's not getting back up until the end of the series. No, I I think. Monster is now a permanent fixture. Of and the then, building. then we see. Hi guys, Julio. I'm a wall. <laughs> <laughs> then we see Julio. No, hey, look, I'm cosplaying as the as the Choji Tindo Emperor. But uh, then we see Julio just transform into this new oh, monster form so with explosion galore. That Michael Bay would be like, damn, my bootkin. <laughs> And he's just saying, don't you dare call me Julio. I mean, really great acting here. I'm not always great at appreciating Japanese actors, but the anger in his words was very genuine. And then Yeah, it almost felt like he wasn't even acting, that he was really, like, methodically being that person. Like, don't you... And the heartbreak as he was going through it... And the entire rest of the episode is just heartbreaking because he goes batshit crazy. Like, he's not him anymore. And then you have Sakura, who's still there. Sakura didn't leave. She was kind of in the... Well, she was starting to leave and then her... Thing. And then sees everything. And I felt... Like, I truly felt for her, but I was truly angry with her at the same time because while it's not her fault... She she could have been closer. She could have prevented... Oh, that's going to weigh on her, I bet. Well, I think the problem is she didn't want to be in their private business. No, I appreciate that. But by merging them to... Not merging, but getting them connected again... She inevitably causes well, this man's I don't, death. Well, that part, fine. But I, I was going to say, I don't think... Fine? Even, but I know, right? Even if she was there, she wouldn't have been able to... No, I'm get, not saying that. ...stop Oteca in time. Well, gu guilt, unfortunately, is not so logical. In fact, we see that as she's fighting Julio's <clears throat> at rage form. And she's reaching down to do a final attack, and she can't. She knows... I think that's some of the, her own guilt impacting her and she's gonna have to wrestle with this for a little while and so then we get back to Iki and Vice Iki asks Vice are you not mad at me and Vice is like well no and they have such a great moment where they're talking and then you actually see the trust finally from Iki putting the Vice amp to his chest to allow Vice to <laughs> to have corporal form. <laughs> and then we have Vice carrying him around. Is everyone else was like, ah! I Actually, I think Vice should be more afraid of the people because out of everyone in this show, he's the only person wearing a damn mask. I know, right? <laughs> and it, it, it is a mask. Um, I really did like that Iki is admitting to a, basically a hero complex, putting everyone else's happiness at his own detriment. But at the same time, Vice is that power inside him saying, hey, I'm a part of you, remember? I'm you. Which I thought that was such a great moment. But it was also... These last two episodes had so many more character moments than Trigger 
and Zenkaiser have had combined. Yeah, the, which is why this review feels a little review feels a little weird. We're staying on task and are talking about something we like. What is this madness? I know we're not talking so, about everything else. But what I was going to say is having him talk about the fact that he stopped caring about himself along the way and started caring about what everybody else's happiness was like makes me wonder because of all those previous episodes where we've seen pictures of him not there. Mm. And it makes me wonder, once again, what happened? Because something had to have happened for him not to be there. Well, we'll see. I mean, we'll still find out when I was at the end of that hallway, like five episodes later. But then, okay, I got it. I will say this. I like the ice form for Revy more than the flame. Yeah, the that's flame. Fair. It's kind of like someone who puts flame decals on their car. Unless your name is Hot Rod or Rodimus Prime, I'm not buying it. <laughs> and Optimus Prime does not get those flames. Screw you, Michael Bay. I will agree with that. And then, so, Icky and Vice come down. They go to battle. They manage to... They do manage to break Julio's dead man form. Mm-hmm. Um, in a pretty cool battle. And then, Oteca's like, oh, cool, now I can kill him. And then we have Aguilera coming down, and Oteca's like, ah, crap. That's hard Oh, it was all, uh, besides looting his friend, it was also Oteca saying, okay, now I'm going to do this to Aguilera. Although, I got to say, Oteca seems less of a threat because he was scared when he saw Julio advance for him. He ran. He so did. When he comes back, making sure to look cocky and true himself from as far away as possible. Up those in the heights beyond man. Making sure self-preservation is always secure. I mean, he's gonna be trying. <laughs> he's gonna be trying to mock people. Oh, that looks like tough. What? I said, looks tough. Come closer. I can't hear you. So, and then so we have uh, Aguilera takes Julio and they leave. And no, no, no. Oh my God. Sorry, I'm gonna keep on interrupting you. You keep trying to rush past. Yes, the because we kind of. I know we're on, we're on a time limit here, but it's very emotional as we learn how. Ooh, when Julio met Aguilera, the new romantic comedy from Japan. But Aguilera's first words to him when they first met is smile, and she's forcing a smile. So you get that, and then when she comes to save him, her first words to him were smile. And I'm like, okay, I like you again because you're saving him. You're not just being a selfish but she phrases it in a selfish way because yes. she's trying to keep up a pre uh, pretense. You're not going to leave me all alone, are you? I, I was like, oh my God. But that's more like, it's not like I care about you or anything, Baka. <laughs> I know! So, okay, then we get to Cinderella. the ending where we have the Iki and them are talking and then we cut to... Uh, what's his name? For the demon. director. No. Oh, no, demons. For demons. Where he's in the hospital, they're like, yeah, you can't transfer him anymore. Your medical tests do not pass. You have the organs of an 80-year-old man. So it's like, oh, is demons... Is the demons driver actually... Uh, Dangerous. Da damaging. Damaging demons, destructively. Um, I think it's Hikalu is his name. I can't remember. I can't remember. Yeah, I think so. Damaging the dandy. But yeah, then we have the Demon. I'm totally not evil McGloves. Um, McGloves. They're looking as the, uh, what you call it? Old tech? Gif. No. Gifu. Gif, uh, Gifu oh, statue oh. starts heart beating louder and lighting up. As if it's, Oh, it's Hiromi. As if it's absorbing every time uh, any sort of demon is destroyed yeah so unfortunately it's still gaining power and was it chance has given me this power or something like that yep and then of course the ultimate buddy scene because not since yugi and atem has there been an ibo this strong i know and he keeps on saying it because iki says are you ready to go partner or ibo and okay. vice is like 
so excited. So he's once again in corporeal form because Daiji and Sakura admittedly they're not strong enough to carry another human being. Especially Daiji. He's tall but very slender. I did like the sunset setting. Yes. That was a really well shot scene. Although I call it the reverse western which sounds like a inappropriate move, but they're walking away from the sunset. Not walking into the light. Don't go into the light! No, Icky! I still love that scene in Beast Wars when you had the sunset in the background. When oh, all, as, as the Predacons were. From part two of Coming of the Fusors. But then the ultimate bro betrayal. Bro bail. My back hurts and literally drops him. It's, the man has three third degree burns, but we're just going to throw him on the ground. But he won't have a single burn scar no. by the next episode. Well, when he transformed, he was perfectly fine to fight. Well, no. They even made a couple of comments about that. Because initially in the fight, he was not moving. So, so almost, excuse me, seemed like he was saving his energy. And even when he was moving around, Vice even asked a couple times, Are you okay? So we got this. I hope. I hope. Oh. But, um, yeah, I... Revice continues to impress. It is probably it, it's getting becoming one of my top common writers so far. Mm -hmm. I, Same. Now, with like build and zero one, the problem they had was that somehow the episode number seemed to outpace the story, so they had to have this sort of treading water or or treadmill section. I'm very much hoping Revice will not uh, will not succumb to that. I agree. Um... Because they have a really good pace, and it doesn't seem like they're going too fast. And it seems like they have some items that, if they did have to take it back a step, they have some background items they could flesh out like, to make up for that. Like, what's down that hallway? Just have a whole episode devoted to walking down that hallway. Really build up the tension, then cut to a cliffhanger just to piss Kruelka off. I will throw something. You mean the Probably stairway? Probably me. Yes, the stairway. Okay, because when you say hallway, I'm trying to think of where in the Phoenix yeah, ship. There was a hallway in the house with the green glow down the... Yeah, but that's down the stairway. I'm thinking... After the stairway is a hallway. Yeah. But I'm thinking of the hallway as in the one Phoenix ship when we saw that hallway with a door and... Have you only seen one hallway in your life? <laughs> I don't know. It might be the same hallway every time. And this is not Final Fantasy thirteen. This is me. not Doctor Who either. Where it's the same corridor, just angle differently. But I really have enjoyed these episodes. And having gotten finished with Trigger, this was such a breath of fresh air. Well, I... Okay, so being that I'm watching Zero One right now, even though I'm still enjoying Zero One the second time through, I like Revice way more than Zero One. Currently. Um, that's fair. I mean, at least you're still not trapped in the void where Trigger is simultaneously the worst and best Ultraman I've ever seen. <laughs> because I've only seen one Ultraman and it's Trigger. Well, at one point, Wizard was the only, the best and worst Common Rare series you've ever seen. Yeah, but I bought the, the Henshin Driver for that. I'm not doing that with Trigger. You oh, all are on your own if you want to get Alright, so what did you guys think of episodes 17 and 18? Click the like, subscribe, the bell notification, whatever else YouTube has you clicking on to support us. You can support me on Patreon, Kaiju no Kami, Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, Discord, Kaiju no Kami, my website, Creativity by Design, LLC.com, and you can check out the cool Kaiju no Kami merchandise, link in the description below, or on the website, just the website name slash shop, and we've got... MOP Silver Quill is not associated with creativity by design. Hey! Oh, it is a lawyer. However, if they would like to pay him for lawyer services, or at least that is equivalent for fee, he would accept. You can find MLP Silver Quill oh, on Twitter. We can't Twitter. pay you to be a lawyer. You're not a lawyer. You can pay me the Saul amount of good, man. MLP Silver Quill can be found on Twitter, DeviantArt, and YouTube, which also of which he is not employed by, but would like to be paid as much as they. <laughs> okay. Cruel King may, may assault Silver, in which case... This will serve as video evidence in the court of law. One, you can't be a lawyer because you're not a lawyer. You don't have this. You're a paralegal like me. That's a parent of us legals. But also.
Also, this can't be video evidence because nothing has been recorded of any kind of assault, abuse, libel, slander, or anything like that. I would encourage you to go back and check some of the previous reviews we've done. I've got like a smorgasbord. I can, I can pull up the deleted scenes we didn't do in these yet. Before the pre, before we actually I started was, recording. I feel like in our review, there's been a smorgasbord of just Cruelka assaulted. She was attacking your chest earlier. Yes. I oh know. my god. So with that said, no, no, I'm we're not you, stopping yet. I'm we're not stopping. There's, I am innocent. I'm being framed. You they, need to come to my uh, rescue. Please come to my rescue. We'll see you. It's not fair. I'm being framed. He can't move to stop this recording. See, that's I'm assault. I'm being framed. Don't worry. Unlawful the SD card's about to go out anyway. Oh, and I'll, <laughs> we'll see you all at the court hearing. Help! <laughs>